My name is Wenying Wu, and I'm presenting the paper Multi-Robot Party Confliction, Deprioritization by Path Prospects, which was written with Subrajit Bhattacharya and Amanda Prorok. The problem we're looking at is, you have a team of robots where each robot has its own start and goal location. We want to compute a set of paths such that each robot reaches its destination without colliding with environmental obstacles or with other robots. In particular, we're interested in heterogeneous teams, so robots may have different mobility capabilities or different sizes. This can be applied in various real-world scenarios, such as warehouses, product delivery, and search and rescue operations. We want a method of finding low-cost solutions, that is, we want robots to reach their goals quickly, and we want this method to be efficient, even for teams with many robots. One strategy is prioritised path planning. This is a decoupled algorithm, so rather than planning in the joint configuration space of all of the robots, we plan for each robot individually, while still ensuring that collisions are avoided. This importantly avoids having the practical combinatorial complexity with regard to the number of robots. For now, let's assume a centralised implementation. The idea is that we assign a priority ordering to our team. Then, starting with the highest priority robot, we plan for each in turn, making sure that it avoids collisions with the paths of all higher priority robots. The solution found will depend on the priority ordering, so how we assign those priorities is an important question. Here's an example. We assume that the blue robot has lower priority, so we first let the red robot plan its ideal path, and the blue robot plans to avoid it. So in this case, we can see in the space-time diagram that the blue robot first has to wait in place for the red robot to move out of the way before it can start moving towards its own goal location. We propose a new heuristic for determining a priority order, the path prospects heuristic. We look at a robot and we ask, how many distinct path options does it currently have for reaching its goal? The left diagram shows what I mean when I say distinct path options, but I'll formalise this later. It's intuitive that we should allow robots with fewer options to have higher priority. On the right is an example. For both possible priority orders, we compute the make span, which is the maximum of the robot's path times, and the flow time, which is the sum. The larger robot has fewer path prospects since it can't fit through the top corridor. So if we let the smaller robot plan first, it takes its optimal path through the large corridor, but this means that the large robot has to wait. If we instead let the large robot plan first, the small robot can instead take the top corridor, and we end up with a smaller make span and flow time. So, how can planning be done in a decentralised manner so that computation can be done on board each robot? We can consider the algorithm at two levels. Firstly, how do the robots coordinate with each other and exchange their priorities? Secondly, how does each plan its own trajectory using knowledge about the environment and the plans that it's received from other robots? Any individual path planning algorithm that can avoid obstacles in space-time so that we can avoid the paths of higher priority robots is suitable. In our implementation, we use a version of the well-known A-star algorithm called Hierarchical Cooperative A-star, proposed by David Silver. Uh, in this algorithm, paths of other robots are marked in a reservation table so that the search treats them as space-time obstacles. I'll now explain the coordination strategy. We require that each robot is able to compute its own priority score. We define a communication range C. When robots come into range of each other, they mutually exchange their current priority scores. Each robot keeps track of the other robots within its range and whether they're of higher or lower priority. Whenever a new robot comes into range, we, uh, we recompute our own priority and broadcast it so everyone has a consistent view of the priority ordering. And we prove in our paper that there can be no ordering cycles and thus no planning deadlocks. As robots move around and priorities change, they'll need to replan their paths accordingly. Uh, there are three cases that this needs to happen, but the point is that we always need to know who is higher priority than us and are we avoiding their latest plan. I'll now formally explain the path prospects heuristic. So in algebraic topology theory, a homology class represents a group of topologically distinct trajectories. Two trajectories belong to the same class if when we join them together to form a closed loop, the region they surround contains no obstacles. We can identify a homology class by looking at how many times its trajectories wind around each obstacle. This gives us a vector of integers, one for each of the z obstacles. But this actually gives us an infinite number of classes because a trajectory can loop around an obstacle any number of times. For example here, tau2 prime has an unnecessary loop, but we want to treat it the same as tau2. So to avoid counting those as separate classes, we instead look at Z2 coefficient homology classes, where even numbers are mapped to zero and odd numbers are mapped to one. 
since each number in this vector can now only be zero or one, and the length of the vector is the, uh, is the number of obstacles z, the number of passes equals two to the z. When computing path prospects, we also need to make sure that we're considering the coupling between that robot's mobility and the environment. So we define the notion of effective obstacles. An effective obstacle is a subset of some of the original obstacles in the environment, where for the given robot, there is no valid trajectory that passes between any of the obstacles in the subset. So on the right, the large robot treats the two central obstacles as one single effective obstacle, since it can't go between them. To compute the priority score, we need to count the number of effective obstacles, and we also only want to count those we're likely to encounter as we move towards our goal. We formalize this by defining a set of forwards vertices. These are indicated by the blue areas. The forwards vertices are those reachable from the robot's current location, if we only transition to vertices that can still lead to paths shorter than the longest true distance of the robots in the team. So whichever robot is furthest away from its goal, it's going to need at least that long to reach its goal. And we only count paths shorter than that, making the assumption that we probably won't need to travel too far out from our own optimal path. We can use a backwards version of Dijkstra's algorithm to compute the forwards vertices. Once we have this set, we know to only count effective obstacles that intersect it. So here we would count these three obstacles, but not these ones. We can now clearly define our path prospects heuristic. For a robot n at time t, its priority score is equal to 2 to the kappa, a kappa is the number of effective obstacles that intersect the forwards vertices, computed also for robot n at time t. For this heuristic, a lower score means a higher priority. We performed two sets of experiments to compare our heuristic against other benchmark heuristics. Experiment S1 used six different clustered grid maps and teams of 10 robots, whereas S2 used a single grid map twice the size and teams of 100 robots. In both experiments, we generated 500 random start goal assignments for each map, and we had various different sizes of robot. This slide shows the maps that we used for S1. For S2, we took the maze 1 environment and doubled it in size. These are the other prioritization schemes that we implemented as benchmarks. The first two look at the number of obstacles or effective obstacles within a certain range of the robot. Forwards looking is similar to path prospects, but we count the normal obstacles that intersect the forwards vertices rather than effective obstacles. Longest first, that's the robot with the longest remaining optimal path go first. And finally, random is random. In the case of ties, we tie break according to longest first, but if that's also a tie, then we tie break randomly. These are the results of S1. Each scatter plot is for a different map and each point shows a different heuristic. The y-axis shows the percentage make span increase over the ideal make span, that is, the make span if we took each robot's optimal path and ignored collisions. The x-axis shows the percentage flow time increase. It's important to note that make span and flow time in general demonstrate a pairwise Pareto optimal structure and can't be simultaneously optimized. Our heuristic is shown in blue. The square is if we tie break randomly, and the diamond is if we tie break using longest first. So we can see that both sit on the empirical Pareto front, low in both make span and flow time dimensions. The fact that our method outperforms the two surroundings heuristics shows that the area in which we count obstacles is important. Just looking nearby doesn't work as well. Comparing against the forwards looking heuristic shows that it's important to count effective obstacles so that we're explicitly considering the coupling between a robot and its environment. The scatter plot shows the results for S2, which had 100 robots. Again, our two methods lie on the empirical Pareto front. On the right, we compare the success rates of the heuristics, computed over all the results in S1. We assume that once a robot reaches its goal location, it stays in place, so it's possible to reach fail states, where a robot at its goal stops another robot from reaching its goal. However, we can see that our two methods achieve the higher success rates. So, to conclude. We designed a novel prioritization heuristic and demonstrated that it lies on the empirical Pareto front of make span and flow time. This shows that there's an important coupling between a robot's mobility traits and its environment. Considering them together finds better solutions than only considering one or the other. Furthermore, our heuristic can be locally computed by each robot. We designed it around Z2 coefficient homology classes, so the score can be computed efficiently without explicitly considering all the possible paths. Thank you for your attention.